So when I started Grammar Girl, I was looking for something faster to do because I'd fallen in love with podcasting. I wanted to keep doing it, but I couldn't spend that much time. So and it's, just to just real quick, it sounds like you loved it, mm-hmm. but it necessarily wasn't necessarily viable. As, as just because you love something, and, right. and, and yeah, I think you, you touched on that a little bit. And people say, follow your passion, but that's only part of it. Like, I loved doing that science podcast, but it was never going to be a viable business. It wasn't worth the time I was spending on it. I think you need to find something you love, but also something that is worth doing. If it's going to be more than a hobby... It's sustainable. It's sustainable. It has to be a good business, too. Okay. All right. So, um, so follow your passion with, uh, with thought. Be sure you think about it. Right. So, and that makes a lot of sense. Um, so kind of after that, with, with Grammar Girl, um, you, you were able to, it sounds like it exploded really quick. Right. It was number two at iTunes within six weeks of when I started it. So it had a very large audience very fast. Did you start in the real area? No, I, w- I was living in Phoenix. Okay. In, in the Arizona area. Okay. Gilbert, actually, when I started the podcast. So, yeah, so I was, I was in Arizona. I started this podcast and it just took off just like hot, crazy. Right? So, you and, knew. so I knew, and from my days working at startups, I knew I was onto something. And so, um, you know, I quickly started the whole network because I felt so. Um, Grammar Girl is a five minute, or when it started, it was a five minute quick tip with one useful piece of information every week. And I felt like it was the format that made it really popular. Because at the time, especially, most podcasts were kind of long and rambling. Yeah. And so I thought that focused, useful bit made, is what made it successful. And Almost so, like a bullet point. Uh, yeah. There's an explanation that I can use this and I can go do my thing now. Right. And it was really obvious how that could be a whole network of shows. So I founded the Quick and Dirty Tips Podcast Network. And um, my first, actually my first um, other host was Adam Lowe. He was the Modern Manners guy. And he had been my co-host from the Science Podcast. So he did a, a new show for our network, and then we had Money Girl and the Mighty Mommy and yeah, Legal Lab. Yeah, uh-huh. So you know so. all these quick tips. So I built the show, I built the network to I think it was five or six shows before I um, partnered with Macmillan Publishing to grow it even more. Very broad spectrum of what you hit. Mm-hmm. You know, people can get on a, a wide variety of uh, from a wide variety of backgrounds. I think I need know about this or need to know about that. It doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily have to consume everything that's there. And uh, like you said, people don't have time to listen to an hour podcast. If they do, they really love it and, and, and they're committed to it. But those five minute sound bites are, are just very effective. Right. Like. Yeah. Yeah. I like, and I like that. I prefer that format myself. Uh-huh. So I just made a show that I would want to listen to and it turned out a lot of other people did too. <laughs> yeah. Like bite-sized quanta of mm-hmm. uh, um, uh, information. Right. Snackable, uh, which became the catchphrase years oh, okay. later. Yeah. 